What's going on, everybody? It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for the season finale to Black Ink Crew Compton. This is season one, episode 10, You Can't Run From the Devil. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. What are you waiting on at this point? Come on now. Let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content, y'all. I am glad that this is the season finale of this season of Black Ink Crew Compton. It was rather boring. I was expecting so much more. This episode and the first episode, I must say, were my two favorite episodes because everything else in between was very... It was boring. It wasn't interesting. I didn't get into the characters as much as I thought I would. Well, not the characters. I didn't get into the artists, the people that's on the show, as much as I thought I would. Um, yeah, so I don't want to make this review long at all. So hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all, the episode is starting off with Tim Sage in the shop. I feel him. I sage my house every Sunday because you got to get rid of them goddamn demons. The devil is a lie. You got to sage your motherfucker on about your house some damn times. So, he's sage in the shop. He's saging it because of all of them damn woolly bibles that Voodoo Stepdaddy sent over there the day before. You know what I'm saying? So, he's saging all of that. That's what's going on at the shop. And Lemire is on Baby Watch 2019. I'm so happy for him. But at the same time, Voodoo is on her way to Washington. Nessie is accompanying her because she has plans to confront her stepdaddy. Now, they're already down there. They're on their way driving there, baby. The closer and closer they get to the house, the more Voodoo was starting to panic. Like, she actually damn near had a full-blown panic attack. Hell, she was making me nervous. I was like, shit, what's going to happen? We close? How far away is we? Damn. What is we doing? What's we going to do when we get there? Finally, they get there. Now, it's a big-ass house. And, baby, it needed to be for all them 50 them kids that was up in there. Girl, first of all, so look here. They pull up to the house, right? Voodoo jump out the car, and she starts to slowly want to... Baby, let me tell you, first of all, I was watching my cyber nephew, Ty Mizzle. Mizzle 14. Follow his YouTube Watch his videos. Be funny as hell. He was saying how um, Voodoo was doing a slow trot away. <laughs> she wasn't even running fast. And Nessie running fast to try to keep up behind her. But you know, she both got them long ass legs. Anyways, she started panicking, freaking out. She didn't want to go in. She didn't want to confront him. Like, she was just like, the when she got there, so many memories started to come back and flood her. She was like, you know what? Forget it. I can't do this, right? So, with all the cameras and all the commotion going outside, that caught the attention of her family. So, her two sisters and her mom end up coming outside, right? Now, first of all, sisters are beautiful girls. All the kids were beautiful. Mom was creepy as hell. I hope don't nobody come for me because I ain't sending for you. Your auntie ain't sent for you. So, don't damn come for me. This is my channel, my opinion. Mama was creepy as hell. I will say, I don't know what this is called. Um, I don't know if it's a burka. I don't, I don't know what it's called. Again, don't come for your auntie. Educate me, okay? If I'm saying it wrong, don't come for me. Educate me, and we'll all be family. You know what I'm saying? But this was beautiful, whatever she had on. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure she wears that for modesty or whatnot, but she still had her arms and all that showing on the sex scene. Anyways, she came outside. Now, her sisters come up to her and embrace her because, like I said, she was trying to run away. And they finally caught up to her, gave her a hug. Um, you could tell that they really did miss her because they were crying. Baby, though, when it came to mama, mama was giving off all kind of creepy ass vibes from the tattoo that was on. I don't know if this was supposed to be a burka that was tattooed on the head as well, or if it was a crown because, you know, she's a queen or whatever it was. But she was hanging on her, really trying to hug Voodoo, but you could see Voodoo wasn't with it. She was just like, uh. You know, okay, uh, uh, just, you know, she really wasn't feeling it. Now, her sisters, yes, yeah, she embraced. Her mama kept trying to get her to come in the house. Kept trying to get her to come in the house. Now, she was like, as long as he's there, I'm not coming in there. So, mama was like, okay, let me go talk to him. If I can get him to leave, then will you come in the house? She was like, yeah, I come in the house, right? So, mama ends up going and talking to stepdaddy. Baby. When stepdaddy came out... I have to say, he ain't a damn thing what I was expecting. 
He hopped out that house looking like a greasy ass pimp named Slickback. He was big, cock strong, and swole with a teeny tiny ass little shirt on. Had grease on top of that gel, brown gel, pro style gel is what it looked like. With that 4C hair brushed back over that big ski ball ass spot on the back of his head. The man looked like a pimp. He looked like a pimp. He looked like a pimp named Slickback. It was exactly what the hell he looked like. Where his hoes? These bitches need to have his money. Because he looked real pimp-ish. Real... Bitch, I said respect the hand-ish is what he looked like. He ended up getting in the Hummer and leaving. Now, that's another thing. Boodle and them fucks come from some, some money. He was riding a big-ass Hummer. They had a big-ass house. Finally, she goes in the house. No lie, I counted at least 15 kids. 15. It was a lot of damn kids. A lot of kids. And just the, the, oh, and I don't want to say this. I want to follow them kids was her mama's kids. Or was some of them kids, them kids, kids. And if so, who was the daddy to them kids? I don't know, y'all. It was just some real weird vibes that was going on with that. Soon as they get in the house, mama started handing out hip wraps to everybody. Gave one to the camera girl, gave one to, to Nessie. And I understand her idea behind that. You know what I'm saying? She was like, you know, when women, we go out jogging, we get our jackets and we wrap it around our waist. Why not let that be something that we do in everyday life? Be modest, basically cover yourself up. Now, Nessie, I don't know if she had on some jeggings or some leggings or whatever, but even said, anybody look at Nessie ass like that? And I understand, you know, mama was like, you are my rules, this is my house. Voodoo was like taken aback by it. She was like, how in the hell, like, really? How you don't even know these people? You're just gonna start handing out hip wraps. But then again, like I said, I'm old school. Mama's probably like, but you in my house, you wearing hip wraps around here. I don't want my sons getting no idea. You know we don't let them do nothing. But then again, all the kids, like the older ones, they had cell phones. The one dude that had his hair like dreaded back, he was on the phone chopping it up with somebody. So I don't know. It was just real different. It was just real different. So she talked to him for a little while. Her one baby sister, um, Eternity, that baby was gorgeous. And she was really drawn to Voodoo. I thought that was so cute. Really drawn to her. Now, Voodoo was saying she didn't even stop to think about all the kids that they would have had after she left. No, she left nine years ago. Some of them kids, at least a good five of them, looked like they was less than nine years old. Again, all them kids is mama. Mama's kids. Or some of them kids and kids, kids. I'm just saying, you know, you know what I'm saying? We're going we gonna to move on from that. The next day, she ends, because she ends up leaving. This is another thing. Her sister Ariana helped us to some games. She was like, look here. I think he's on his way back. You got about 10, 20 minutes. She was like, oh, hell to the now. I'm supposed to go. She kissed them kids, you know, told them, I promise it won't be this long when we see each other no more. But I got to get the hell on up out of here. You know who he looked like? That man from that video that said, hell no, to the no, no, no. Hell to the no, no. That's who he looked like. Exactly like him. Black, greasy, big swole with all of this. And then he had tattoos on his face, but he was, you couldn't even see the tattoos from all the grease that was, girl, it was just a lot going on with that stepdaddy. I was like, oh God, oh God. Next day she ends up meeting with her mama. Oh yeah, one more time. Before she left, no, when she actually ended up leaving, daddy ended up coming back. Mama was talking to um, the one sister. Mama and the other sister was talking to Ariana. Was like, why did you tell her? You know, he's been waiting to talk to her. She was like, I think he needed to know. She needed to know. She's scared of him, and it's not fair for her to be here when she's scared of him. So, yeah, I told her. I hope don't nothing come back to that girl for her telling something like that. Because, you know, according to Voodoo, the motherfuckers is crazy. You know what I'm saying? But the next day, she ends up meeting with her mama because she said she want to talk to her mama about everything that went on in the house. Like... It was like shit that went down and you weren't there for me. You know what I'm saying? Mama is completely oblivious to everything. What are you talking about right now? Are you on drugs? Where you get this from? I have no idea what you're talking about. And you know what? In that moment, I believed 
everything that Voodoo was saying. Just because that mama was just completely disregarding everything that she was saying. Calling her a liar, asking her was she on drugs, asking her, well, did you not get enough attention? Did you not feel enough love? Bitch, first of all, are you giving enough love to all them 5,100 damn kids that's up in that house, number one? Number two, you can't say that what that girl is feeling or what she said she went through, she didn't go through that. And as a mama to your daughter, you just going to disregard that? Child, voodoo. You need an auntie, boo-boo, I'm here for you. Because your mama, I'm sorry, I don't mean to disrespect your mama, but your mama is batshit, and she brainwashed. And as soon as Voodoo called her out about being brainwashed, she got pissed off. She got up out the car and was like, you know what, take care of yourself. Mama kept trying to get her to come in the house so she could do a reading on her. I was thinking, Voodoo, don't you go in that house, because as soon as ain't nobody around, they're going to lock your ass up in that house. It's going to be some get out shit. She going to be stirring the tea, clinker, 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 and taking your whole mind frame from you now. Mm -mm. Mom was on some other shit. But Buddha was like, you know what? It is what it is. I know I'm not going to get no closure from that. I came here. I got to see my sister. So at least it wasn't a whole complete waste. And she ended up leaving from there. Like I said, in that moment, I believe everything Buddha was saying. Because when that daddy came back afterward, daddy was like, yeah, she running away from the lies. Now she running away from your ass. I be running away from your black ass too. So KP wants to do an event for the community. He says since ain't been no police, no crackheads, no chicken heads, no nothing around that round shop. He wants to do an event to give back to the kids in the neighborhood. He's doing a back to school drive, giving away backpacks, probably haircuts, free tattoos for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> all of that. They learn how to paint and all of this and that stuff, right? Now, this is the event that he wants to put together. And he stop as he's talking to the team, telling the team what he wants to do, Barbie walk her ass up in. Everybody like, what the fuck she doing here? KP says that Barbie came and hollered at him the day before she apologized, and it's something that she wants to say to the rest of the crew. Basically, she tells him that she recognizes where she was wrong, she knows that she can be super petty, and she apologizes for going off the way that she did. She tells Alana that I realize I shouldn't have hit you, but it happened, and you probably didn't deserve that. That was her apology to Alana. I mean, it is what it is. They end up forgiving her. It's in the contract. It's in the VH1 contract. They had to forgive her. And so she ends up coming back to the shop, right? Lemire ends up having his baby girl. Well, Danielle ends up having a baby girl. Summer Miracle Mitchell. That baby is gorgeous. She looked like a little piece of white chocolate. That baby is so gorgeous. She looks in every way she like Lemire. She looks just like Lemire. And I know Lemire mama is head over heels, which means that baby girl looks just like her because he looks exactly like his mama. That little girl is gorgeous. Congratulations to Lemire. He, every time that baby will cry, girl, he go pick up the baby, talk about never fear. Superman is here. That baby already got his ass wrapped around her itty bitty little finger and it's beautiful congratulations to danielle and lamir and danielle is already starting to get her snatch back bitch you going on in bitch i ain't managing it one of this girl y'all so everybody's at the shop it's the day of the event they're putting the backpacks together for all the kids you know putting all the supplies in it together right Barbie's there helping out with the rest of the crew. Next thing you know, Nessie and Voodoo walk in because they're back from the trip from Washington. Now, as soon as they walk in, Bar uh, Nessie looking at Barbie like, okay, what the hell is she doing here? She back in the shop now? Lemire's like, well, yeah, I guess. Apparently, she back. So, at that point, Nessie was like, you know what? I'm sucking up. I'm shut the fuck up. I ain't going to say nothing about it right now. She stay out of my way. I'm going to stay out of her way. It is what it is, right? So, the event is popping off. Penny Proud is there. That's my girl, Penny Proud. She's there. Lemire's there with happy eyes. Danielle comes and brings the baby. And it's so super cute. It ended all on a good note. But before we end, though, Barbie ends up having a conversation with Nessie. She is still on this whole thing about Nessie was being disloyal to her when it came to the whole thing with Big Bear. Now, bitch, excuse me. First of all, you claim to be so hard a bitch from Compton, crip walking on these hoes and all of that. But she was the first one to call the cops 
Call the cops on yourself. Then tell on yourself. Then don't answer the phone when Voodoo was trying to get in contact with you. Then you come back and it's all on Nessie. I don't understand that. I, make me understand where Nessie was wrong in the whole thing. I feel like Barbie was wrong. She took it overboard. And so she needed to be mad at somebody because she needed to pinpoint her anger at somebody. And so it's convenient for her to point it at Nessie because she the weakest one. If that's the case, why not point it at Voodoo? Like, Lemire. He was laughing at your ass. Like... <laughs> I don't understand what the whole thing is. And her, she was like, I don't have many friends. And so the girls that I rock with, I consider you to be family. Well, bitch, that's your fault. You just met Nessie. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But y'all, the episode pretty much ended from there. It ended on a good note. Everybody's happy. Will I be reviewing season two? Nope. Nope, I will not. <laughs> Just because I expected so much more from this season and the only one that gave me something was Penny Proud and Voodoo Doll. You know what I'm saying? Even though at first, I ain't gonna lie, I was getting sick and tired of the whole thing with the cult. But then when you see like, damn, she wasn't lying like, this shit is crazy. Crazy, but you know, it is what it is. Guys, thank y'all for sticking it out for me through this season review. If there was anything that I missed in this episode, let me know. I hope y'all enjoyed the review that I had of this season of Black Ink Crew content. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ah, hello.